This is Xi'an Yuko in the Tianmen area of Beijing. This 233-year-old theater is very famous. The year of 1916 witnessed an event that would have far-reaching influence on China's theatrical circles. The first women's theater troupe was established in Tianyuan Theater. Before this, women were not even allowed to enter a theater, let alone perform on the stage. This event symbolically threw off the shackles on women and was of epic-making significance for the maturity and development of the so-called Dian roles in Peking opera. Dian roles are female roles played by male performers. During the peak of Peking opera, there were 13 theaters in the Tianmen area. The four famous Dan performers all started their glorious careers from here. To promote Peking opera and to make it known to foreigners, the reconstructed Tianli Yuan Theater also has a Peking opera experience center. Since the 1920s, modern elements have been added to traditional opera. It was during this period that a bold innovator presented a modern costumed play based on a foreign story. Because of this, he stood out as one of the four famous Dan performers. He was Shang Xiaoyang, founder of the Shang School of Peking Opera. When he was seven, to help his family, he voluntarily sold himself to an opera troupe. When he was 12, he made his debut appearance in theater. At 15, he became the number one child performer in Beijing. And at 16, he completed his training and began to work for himself. Soon he became recognized for his exceptional performance in various Dan roles from elegant aristocratic ladies to charming beautiful girls, from female warriors to martial artists. Proficient in folk opera traditions, he sought innovations and variations in his performance and eventually established his own unique style, combining melodious singing with intricate dancing, extravagant martial arts with delicate acting. Zheng Xiaoying, one of the top four Dan performers in Peking Opera, gave his female characters a beauty of power and strength. This style brought him fame and glory at various periods of his career, and criticism and attacks sometimes. The road he chose was difficult, but rewarding. Inside Andingmen, one of the city gates of Beijing, there remain some Hu Tongs and courtyards from the late Qing dynasty. It was said that it was a residential area for Manchu bannermen. In 1900, Cheng Xiaoyin was born in one of the courtyards. He was the second son of a declining aristocratic family. His ancestor, Cheng Guoxi, was named Prince of Southern Peace by the emperor for his military merits in the early Qing dynasty. Sheng Xiaoyin's father, Sheng Yi Zhao, moved from Hubei to Beijing and found a job at the mansion of a prince. When Sheng Xiaoyin was born, the family was living a rather comfortable life. However, in 1900, when Sheng Xiaoyin was eight months old, the Eight Nation Alliance occupied Beijing which thrust his family into financial difficulty. When he was five years old, his father passed away, leaving six young children behind. His mother began working as a hawker, selling matches and collecting garbage. Soon his elder sister and a younger brother died, and his elder brother left home and never came back. Sensitive in nature and growing up in utmost poverty, Cheng Xiaoyin learned about the cruelty of human hearts at an early age, which helped build his dignity 
and perseverance. When he was seven, he proposed to his mother that he was willing to take the painstaking training to become an opera performer. At the time, Peking opera remained prosperous due to the glorification of the royal family of the Qing dynasty. If an opera performer had certain special skills none of the others was capable of, he might be invited to perform in the royal palace, and that would make his value multiplied instantly. In such a social environment, the boy realized that it might be a way for him and his family to rise out of poverty. However, his mother, Zheng Wentong, did not give him the consent immediately. At the time, opera performers were ranked as low as prostitutes, slaves, and the lowest foot soldiers in society. When someone became an opera performer, he was not even allowed to visit the tomb of his ancestors. As life became more difficult, Zheng Xiaoyin was more insistent about it. Finally, in the spring of 1907, Zheng Wentong gave her consent, and Zheng Xiaoyin, together with his five-year-old brother, became pupils of famous Peking opera performer Li Chun Fu. Soon Li Chun Fu recommended them to study at San Luo Troupe, a newly established Peking opera training troupe. The Peking Opera Professional Training Troupe appeared in the late Qing Dynasty as an establishment to combine training and performance. Usually the entire training took seven years. Before the training was started, the students had to sign a contract with the troupe, committing to unconditional acceptance of the harshest training and management. We, Xi there used to be a small alley called Ta Shua Hu Tong in today's Xian Wu Man, Beijing. It was said that the San Lua Troop was set up in a bankrupt dye house in this alley. More than a century ago, Zheng Xiaoyin started his opera training here. As a young boy, Zheng Xiaoyin perhaps had no idea what the seven-year imprisonment meant. However, witnessing the struggles of his family and looking forward to a bright future, he cherished the opportunity of a professional training and was determined to endure any hardship. When I joined the San Lua Troop, every day I told myself multiple times, be strong. Zheng Xiaoyin later said that when he recalled those days of training, as strong as he was, it was not an easy process for him to deal with the twists and turns. He was first trained to play Hua Lian, male characters with a painted face, but his voice was improper for this role. Soon he was transferred to another role, Wu Sheng, male characters of martial arts. He progressed very fast, and after training only a few months, he was able to play on stage. However, his low stamina was not enough to sustain him long in these roles. At some point, a teacher suggested that he should be trained in the Dan roles because of his beautiful voice and handsome look. For the beginners, to choose a role is only the first step. For almost all of them, the most difficult part of all was the corporal punishment. At the time, all opera troops had a belief that no corporal punishment, no theatrical achievement. We know that the teacher has a 
，是为拍板的，啊，来衡量你的节奏啊，按照节拍来唱。但是这个板子也是为打人的，师傅可以任意的责和罚，责嘛就是打，叫做打死无论。Sheng Xiaoyin's first teacher in the Dan role was Tang Ju Ting, who had no mercy in carrying out corporal punishment. 那时候唐老师，当然人家戏教的是很好，但是就特别过于严格了，啊，打人很厉害，都管叫唐八陪。Sheng Xiaoyin later recalled, "When I first began my training, there was a word I couldn't pronounce correctly. My teacher was angry and beat my hands. I still couldn't do it, and he was so mad that he put his ruler into my mouth and churned it." Until blood came out of my mouth, I dare not cry. I went to the kitchen, found some cold water to rinse my mouth, and went back to continue my practice. Sheng Xiaoyin's exceptional potentialities soon attracted the attention of the chief of the troop. He appointed the best teachers to train him in multiple roles. Apart from Peking Opera, he also trained in Kuanqi Opera. Sun Yiwen was coach of the Royal Opera Troupe, and he was considered one of the best teachers of his time. It was him who helped Sheng Xiaoyin lay a solid foundation in the Qin Yi role. It's natural for an art form to have different schools or traditions. For example, in theater, there is expressionism and method acting. In painting, there is abstractionism. In music, there is impressionism. And in literature, there is stream of consciousness. Many schools of Peking opera are named after performers because leading performers are the center of Peking opera. They inherited their predecessors' achievements and, based on their own features, they created unique plays, ways of performance, and performing skills that were accepted by the audience. Eventually, they created their own schools. The four famous Dan performers established their own schools because they all had their own strengths and characteristics. Their teacher, Wang Yaoqing, a master of Peking opera, commented that Mei Longfeng had the best appearance. Cheng Yangchu's singing style was the most unique. Shun Wei Chen looked the most innocent. Shang Xiaoyong was good at singing and acrobatic skills, and his stage presence was the best. In 1912, Sheng Xiaoyin made his debut at Guanghe Lo Theater in Beijing. Years later, he said, When I recall my debut, I have mixed feelings of something bitter, sweet, sour, and spicy. This youth thus began to impress the whole of Peking City for his powerful voice, attractive look, and versatile skills. In the following year, when San Lua Troop was renamed as Zheng Lua Troop, Sheng Xiaoyin already became the pillar of the group. Together with Xin Hui Sheng and Zhao Tong Shan, he was named one of the three stars of Zheng Lua. However, in Beijing, a city full of folk opera stars, to succeed in this trade was never easy. As he grew in fame, Sheng Xiaoyin became more confident. One day he expressed his interest in partnering with famous Dan performer Guang Yin Fu for a major opera, only to be rejected so ruthlessly. This traumatic experience scarred him. 
Zheng Xiaoyin later recalled, These words made me feel outraged. I immediately quit from the troop. They didn't care if I quit. I came home and cried the whole night. I didn't eat anything. Then I thought to myself, what's the use of crying? I must continue. He said, I was at that time, don't let this heart be held. You have to be able to hold it to be able to get out of the way. Inside the Taoyanting Park of Beijing, there's a place called Yao Tai, which was in the wilderness in the early 1900s. The day after the humiliating rejection, Zheng Xiaoyin came to this place to practice his vocals. In the next two years, he came here every day before sunrise to sharpen his singing skills. He prepared himself for future opportunities. And finally, the right time came. In the winter of 1914, Sun Ji Qian, a famous Peking opera star based in Shanghai, came back to Beijing to rehearse The Madam Teaches Her Son, and he needed a young Dan performer to be his partner. Sun Ji Qian was 73 years old at the time, and he chose 14-year-old Sheng Xiaoyin to be his partner. Sun Ji Qian from the north came back and found that Beijing has the ability to perform the performance, the style of the performance, and the style of the performance. 已经形成了非常非常大大的不同。孙菊山的演唱风格是偏于旧的，所以他的风格你要找一个跟他配的，那就得找一个相对旧的风格来跟他配，否则搭不上嘛。所以尚小云在传统上他已经显露了非常好的功底。另外呢，孙菊山本人的嗓子又特别好，对吧？咱们都知道，所以呢，呃，尚小云的这个嗓子铁嗓钢喉能够配得上。Soon there came to be a closure for the humiliating experience Sheng Xiaoyin had two years prior. He later recalled, one day I was collaborating with the same troupe, and they asked me to partner with Guan Yun Fu for a major opera. I went to the backstage to see the manager and confronted him. What do you say now? I was really aggressive with him. There was a kind of a young man's feeling. 这个班主也能找出一个下台阶的一个理由来。他说：“当初我不是那样侮辱你、啐了你以后谈，你恐怕未必有今天。” Zheng Xiaoyin said, "That was a moment of clarity. I felt really embarrassed. Later, I treated the manager as my teacher." 天山 Opera House was one of the most important venues for famous Peking opera stars to expand their influence to Shanghai. At the time, there was a saying in the Peking opera world: "Without performing in Tian Shan, one will never achieve fame." In January 1917, six months after completion of training, Zheng Xiaoyin was invited to Shanghai to perform at the famous Opera House which was right next to the city's most extravagant shopping mall, Wing On Company. At this point, Mei Lan Fong, the most important Peking opera performer in Dan Rolls, had conquered the hearts of all. In Tian Shan Opera House's advertisement for Sheng Xiaoyin's coming performance, it described this teenage performer as second to Mei Lan Fong. Unlike Mei Lan Fong, his debut at Tian Shan didn't make him a star overnight. But over time, he conquered the hearts of the audience with his exceptional singing. Because his box office remained high, 
the Opera House renewed its contract with Sheng Xiaoyin again and again. In the end, he ended up performing 138 days in Shanghai. That was quite unusual for Beijing actors touring in Shanghai. In November 1917, in a vote organized by a newspaper in Beijing, Mei Lan Feng was given the most votes and became elected King of Opera, while Sheng Xiaoyin was elected Champion of Child Performers. Just to say about Tong Lin, he at that time was in his 18th birthday. 已经不是严格意义的统领，所以这个说明什么呢？说明在梅兰芳就是如日中天成为大王的时候，尚小云其实已经跻身于一流名伶，哎，这这是一个标志。From a seven-year-old beginner to a seventeen-year-old star, Zheng Xiaoyin had fulfilled his promise to his mother. He was lucky that he was about to meet a man who would influence him profoundly in his artistic career. That man was Yong Xiaolo, a genius performer in Wu Sheng, male roles skilled in martial arts. Yong Xiaolo was not only a brilliant martial artist, but also an excellent vocalist. He was especially good at playing the Monkey King and the characters from the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. After watching Sheng Xiaoyin's performance, partnering with Sun Ji Qian, Yong Xiaolo saw great potential in this young man. At the end of 1917, the superstar invited Sheng Xiaoyin to join his Tongxin troupe. He was a national director. He was a friend of many of the younger people. He was a friend of many of them. Sheng Xiaoyin and Yang Xiaolong had a lot of influence in the same way. 是一些恢复排演的传统戏，上下人就上上杨小楼他们家去学这个东西，啊，学就是问，其实是对戏嘛，他就通过这种这种恢复排演老戏，整理排演老戏，学到了技艺。Three months later, a masterpiece starring Yang Xiaolo and Sheng Xiaoyin was released in theater. In this opera. Yong Xiaolo played the king of the state of Chu, while Sheng Xiaoyin played his concubine. In their partnership, Sheng Xiaoyin never stopped being impressed by the Grand Master's power, glamour, and skills. For years, Sheng Xiaoyin kept telling his son how wonderful Yong Xiaolo was. In his words, Yong Xiaolo was unparalleled when playing the king of Chu. 他特别崇拜杨小龙，所以在他的艺术风格当中，融入了很多杨小龙先生杨派武生艺术的记忆。Peking opera performers were good at learning from others' technique and absorbing their essence. While learning much from their predecessors, they made bold changes, exploring their own unique styles. And emphasizing their innovations, because of this, many schools of Peking opera were born, and they were the pillars of Peking opera. But the way of reform and innovation was always full of hardships. They might even suffer catastrophes. In the early 1920s, Sheng Xiaoyin was already a well-established opera performer. It was at this time he began to hear some criticism. It was a time of innovation. With the appearance of new aesthetics, Mei Lan Feng took the lead in creating new operas and composing new tunes. Newer opera performers also began to rehearse new works. However, Sheng Xiaoyin seemed untouched by the trend. Naturally, people began to criticize him for being stuck in conventions. This opinion was to be changed in 1923. On December 7th, Zheng Xiaoyin released his new opera, Hong Xiao, in Guangdolo Opera House. The opera was an adaptation of the famous story from the Tang Dynasty, a romance between Hong Xiao, a performer at a brothel, and Tui Yin, a gentleman from a higher class. In this opera, the tune, 
and the sword dancing scene attracted the most praises from the fans. The success of Hong Xiao marked the beginning of a new stage in his career. Earlier that year, he bought a huge mansion in Tween Shu Hu Tong, and his purpose was allegedly to rehearse new operas. It turned out that he was extremely productive when living in this courtyard. A series of new female characters were created. Qin Liang Yu, a self-made general who took over her late husband's command to fight against enemies. Li San Niang, a woman who remained loyal to her husband and protected her son in difficult situations. Lin Su Niang, a girl skilled in martial arts and serving her parents piously. And Xie Xiao Wu, a smart wife who successfully caught the murderers of her husband. Thus, Sheng Xiao Yin had transformed himself into a creative talent, which impressed the whole opera world. Da Xi Lanner is a place in Tianmen Street of Beijing. In the early 1920s, it was a Peking opera center. There were many opera houses, and new operas were often released here. When an opera star released a new composition in one opera house, another opera star might release another production in another opera house. This competition gave Peking opera vitality and kept the market prosperous. During this time, Zheng Xiaoyin traveled between Peking and Shanghai for his new operas. The Shanghai opera critics called him a superstar. In 1927, Zheng Xiaoyin released his new opera, The Ma Tung U Girl, at Xin Ming Theater. The opera combined Peking opera with a Buddhist story, Western costumes of modern age, piano and violin accompaniment, and Scottish dance. The production cost for this opera was three times higher than other new operas. The Ma Tunga Girl set a precedent for Peking opera in adapting foreign stories. The premiere was a hit, but with controversies. Some regarded it as an original masterpiece, and others called it improper and dishonorable. In the summer of 1927, an open selection of the top Dan actors was launched. As a result, Mei Lan Feng, Zheng Xiaoyin, Zheng Yan Chou, and Xin Hui Sheng were the most outstanding in the selection and were named the four most famous Dan actors of Peking opera at this time. Zheng Xiaoyin's opera, The Ma Tunga Girl, became champion with 6,628 votes. At the time, Zheng Xiaoyin was 27 years old, and both his skills and his look began to reach its peak. In the next few years, he continued to be productive. Firstly, he created several new operas. Secondly, he often played multiple roles in one opera. He was often involved in script writing himself, which magnified the heroic style of art. Zheng Xiaoyin 
表演上坚持传统范式。演花旦的时候严格按照花旦演，演青衣的时候严格按青衣演，但他把这个花旦、青衣融合在一个剧目里头。In February 1931, Zheng Xiaoying released his new opera, a story about a minority ethnic group, which nobody paid much attention to back then. It immediately became a hit. By this point, he had successfully established himself as a Peking opera master, whose versatile capacities allowed him to innovate certain traditions. And to enrich many dimensions of Peking opera, different from the stereotypes of women in traditional narratives, many of the female characters he created were powerful heroines who had the courage and strength to fight for what they believed was right. With his efforts, Peking opera began to pay attention to the conditions and values of women. That was an important reason why he was elected one of the four famous Dan actors by the audience. In一九三一年长城唱片公司找梅兰芳、呃、程砚秋、徐慧生、尚小云四个人录制了一个唱片，叫《四五花洞》。这个时候，他们得到了呃社会上的承认，牢牢地占据了中国京剧旦角的前四
Greatly saddened by these words, Sheng Xiaoyin said, If your troop needs money, I'll take care of it. If you are interested, I'll help your students rehearse my new operas. That was an unusual commitment in that highly competitive environment of Peking Opera. Soon, Sheng Xiaoyin began to rehearse the Fu Lian Cheng students in his courtyard. As Sheng Xiaoyin's new operas began to be released in Fu Lian Cheng's theater, the young actors began to conquer the hearts of the audience. Sheng Xiaoyin made an effort to help Ye Sheng Zhong rehearse Drunken Beggar. The premiere of the opera was an overwhelming success. According to the new chief of the troupe, by the autumn of 1935, Fu Lien Chung's box office income surpassed that of the time before the crisis. In this entire process, Sheng Xiaoyin insisted on working voluntarily. He directed these operas and provided the props and the costumes for free. He also paid from his own pocket for food, for the students, and wages for the guest actors. However, after he revived Fu Lian Cheng selflessly, his pure motive was questioned. There were rumors that Sheng Xiaoyin let the troupe rehearse his operas in order that he could seize control of this prominent training school. Sheng Cheng Chun, Sheng Xiaoyin's oldest son, was a student at Fu Lian Cheng at the time. But as this gossip became worse, the boy couldn't even continue his study there. At last, Sheng Xiaoyin and his son both left Fu Lian Cheng and severed all interactions with the troupe. In early 1936, Sheng Xiaoyin hired two teachers for his son, who had quit his study from Fu Lian Cheng. He recruited 17 young men to study together with his son. This is a book about the history of Sheng Xiaoyin's training school, Rong Chong Shi. And it was founded when the war was looming over the city of Beijing. The opera world was about to see a depression. 这个时候恰恰是社会上科班解散。相当一些人是带一头师来了，怎么办？他这个义气就来了，他要为穷苦孩子找一个吃饭的门路。In February 1936, Sheng Xiaoyin published an advertisement to announce his intention to set up a training school named Rong Chun Shi. Within a year, he recruited nearly 200 students. July 7th, marked the official start of the war between Japan and China. As soon as it happened, Zheng Xiaoyin ended his tour in Shanghai and returned to Beijing. Beijing,赶回去以后,北京的梨园是一个什么状态呢?一片恐慌。像唱戏这个行业,在战乱期间,他们是没有自己的自己生存能力的,所以上小云毅然决然就出来把梨园的同仁呢,给他组织起来。由
In March 1938, with Sheng Xiaoyin's efforts alone, Rongchun Shi was established formally as a Peking Opera Training School after a year's preparation. Some say Sheng Xiaoyin had been living the life of the characters he created, those chivalrous heroes of sacrificial spirit. In time of hunger, he persevered in his study and seized every opportunity to improve himself. In the face of competition, he had the capacity to integrate all different elements into Peking opera, to enrich the art form. Seeing the exigencies of the entire industry, he offered shelter to all those comrades selflessly. In Rongchun Shi, he abolished the contract of life and death. For each student, he helped them see their own potentialities and interests, and then offered them the right teachers and curriculums. He also ensured that every student would be given proper food, clothing, and health care. Yongchun 一定是最高的东西上天这个时候把全部精力就是放在督导教学和晚上为学生拔场他特别重视学生的吃饭的质量我赶上一次师傅拿着藤杆就从我们摆的吃饭的桌台长桌台就从这边把这一桌的饭全
焕发了我父亲的第二个艺术青春。那个时候可以说走遍了大半个中国，深入部队，哎，深入到工厂啊。那个时候也快六十了，他经常就是连演五个钟头戏，深深感到作为一个京剧演员，作为一个呃戏曲名家的社会担当。The opera Princess Shongyong was an adaptation of the traditional opera Banner of Pearls and Fire, and it was dedicated to the 10th anniversary of the founding of the New China. Sheng Xiaoyin was 59 years old, but the opera was filled with passion and creativity. In 1959, invited by Shi Zhongxin, Secretary General of the State Council, and those who loved his art in Shanxi. Sheng Xiaoyin moved from his hometown Beijing to Xi'an as a way to support the cultural endeavors of the Northwest China. In the following years, he established the Shanxi Peking Opera House and began his lectures to the society at large. A documentary made by the Central Newsreel and Documentary Studio recorded a scene where Sheng Xiaoyin and his second son. Sheng Chenglin were giving a demonstration of certain performance conventions to his new students. As a record shows, Sheng Xiaoyin had taken under his tutelage a total of 213 students, among which 180 were taken after he moved to Xi'an. These students of his included not only actors in Peking Opera or Kuaqi Opera, but also actors in Qing Chong, Yi Ji. Pingji, and other folk opera types. Sheng Xiaoyin shared unreservedly his insight and understanding of the essence and skills of folk opera with these young people who came from all over China. In 1962, Xi'an Film Studio made a film about Sheng Xiaoyin. Considering his age and physical condition at the time, Sheng Xiaoyin adjusted his performance in his roles. Whether in his own performance or in teaching, he stressed again and again that a performer had to master this art to the best advantage of his own physical conditions. That was why he emphasized the importance of being deeply rooted in traditional training while remained open-minded to different styles, techniques, and methods. In January 1964, Shanxi Peking Opera House was formally established in Xi'an. However, only two years later, Sheng Xiaoyin was thrown into the turbulence of the Cultural Revolution, a holocaust that continued in China for 10 years. On April 19th, Sheng Xiaoyin died of a heart attack in Xi'an at the age of 76. His last words to his students were, the students who truly respect me are those idealists who persevere in their learning and believe in the infinite power of art. Among the four famous Don performers, Shan Xiaoyang, was the only one who lived through the golden era of Peking Opera. His 60 years of efforts and his Shang School of Peking Opera had far-reaching influence on later generations. The four famous Dan performers lived in a period when Western culture had a huge impact on Chinese culture. They developed their own art styles, established their own schools, accelerated the maturity of Peking opera and pushed it to a new height. Among the four famous Dan performers, 
Shan Xiaoyan was the last to pass away. His death marked the end of an era for Peking Opera. But Peking Opera didn't fade away. Generations of Peking Opera performers follow in their footsteps. They move with the tide of the times and keep exploring and making changes, creating a new era of Peking Opera.